I'm gonna share with you nine quick Cubase tips and tricks that I think you need to know. What's going on, my friends? Chris Alim here from Mixdown Online. Now, today we are gonna look at nine Cubase tips that I think you need to know. Those are the result of a bunch of questions that I received over the past weeks and months, and it was time for me to come up with a new Cubase tip video, and there it is. Okay, now before we jump to the first tip, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, and also share and like if you love and enjoy this video. All right, so now to tip number one. How to open the option dialog box when processing a shared audio event. And this is an answer to the following question. Chris, I do not get the option of a new version when I duplicate the main vocals and manipulate the duplicated track in very audio. As a result, my main vocal notes also changes. Please help. Thanks. So let me explain to you what is happening here. So uh, when you duplicate a track like I'm going to do right now with this channel, whatever I do to the duplicated audio event, it will affect the original event also because those are linked to the same audio file that is uh, in the pool, okay? So if you want to fix that, you need to make a copy of that uh, uh, that event, the duplicate event version. To do so, uh, you need to make sure that under preferences, uh, under edit down to preferences, uh, if you click on the editing and then audio, you will see the on processing shared clips. You need to make sure that open options dialog is the one selected. Yours is probably uh, set up to process existing clips. So you just need to go and click, make sure the open options dialog is the one selected. Click OK. And now next time you're gonna uh, manipulate your file in very audio. Let's do it right now. I'm gonna select my duplicated audio event. I'm gonna click on, uh, I'm gonna double click on it first of all and then I'm going to activate Very Audio. Now, when I'm going to start playing with the pitch of this uh, duplicated event, I'm going to see this window, and that is the window that you are missing right now. And this is going to essentially ask me if I want to create a new version of this uh, audio event or keep working on the original one. So you just click on New Version, and there you go. Now I have a new version uh, name right here uh, under the name of that event. There's a small 2 that was added, and that means it, that it has created a new event, a new audio file that is straight in the pool. So this is basically how you can work this out. Okay, now to the next tip. How to rename an audio event. Okay, I'm gonna use the same audio event that I have right here, the copied one. So there's a few ways I can use to change the file name of this event. Um, so I select the event to start with, and on the top, on the top left of my project window, we have description. And this is the name listed right under description. I have the name of my selected event. The only thing that I need to do is to change it and name it to the file or to the name that I want. Click on enter, elect solo two is now the new name of this event. Uh, what we have here in, uh, in parentheses is the original file name, okay, the audio file that we have in the pool. Uh, so if the name is not the same as we have on the audio event, you will have the original name of the file itself in parentheses. Okay, so this, this is why you see uh, that name, uh, which in this case is Elec Orange 7 2. Okay, so that's the reason why. Uh, now, something else that is also very cool is that you can change the name of the channel and a selected event or events at the same time. So let's go and the rename our, uh, our solo channel. And I'm going to rename this one to Git Solo 2. And I'm going to click on Shift and then click on Enter. And now it will change the name of the channel itself and also the selected audio event. All right, so those are a couple of options you can use to change the name of a, an audio event. Now, if you don't want to see the original file name in parentheses, you just need to name that event the same as your original file name, and you're going to be good to go. Okay, that's the only name that is going to show on that event. Let's try it out. So I'm going to just rename this one to the same name as its original file name. 
And there you go. Now I only have one name, which is the original one. But the minute you change that and the name of the event is different than the original or the root uh, audio file, it will be shown in parentheses. All right. So this is how you can work this out. Let's jump on tip number three. How to ripple delete like in Adobe Premiere. I work in Adobe Premiere, which is a video editing software, and this is how I edit all of my videos. Now, there's a function that is very useful that you know people when editing videos will use all the time, and it's called Ripple Delete. What Ripple Delete will do um, is basically uh, when you're doing a cut, where, when you're doing a cut on a video, um, it's going to bring your the end of the cut, you know, the next event after your cut to the end of the previous event, okay, at the cutting point. So this is what it's going to do. So I hope I explained this well, but you're going to see it in Cubase because you can also do the same in Cubase if you want, uh, for example, cut off a complete section uh, of, a, uh, of a track or the full song. You can use a function similar to Ripple Delete and that will do it. So let's jump into it and let me explain to you better in a better way by showing it directly in Cubase. Okay, so let's say I want to just get rid of that section here. I'm going to select my range selection tool. So let's say I just want to, uh, to get rid of this part. Um, so I select it, I click on delete, but I don't want to leave any space, any empty space, but I want that left, uh, that right event to automatically be, uh, be snapped to the left event, okay, without leaving any space in between. What I need to do is to select again with the range selection tool and then click on shift and backspace. That will delete time. And this is what it, it is called in Cubase. So the equivalent of ripple delete is delete time in Cubase. All right, so um, you can also find this under edit and then go down to range and then you will see delete time right here. So that will cut the selected event without leaving any space in between the two events. So those two, uh, two uh, leftover events will be snapped together. Uh, let's do this on the full project, and okay, get to the, the full song. And this can be practical at some point. So if I want to select more than one channel, but I want to select the full, uh, all channels of my project, I just need to keep my fingers on shift and control or command if you're on Mac and just select the section that I want to work on. And that will select this, uh, this range on all channels at the same time. And from that point, I can do the same thing and click on shift and backspace, and that will delete the time within that selected range. Very, very useful. So this is how you can do this. And this is the equivalent of ripple delete found on Adobe Premiere. Now for tip number four, how to loop a selected range very fast. Okay, now this is very useful when mixing. Uh, you want to just loop a specific section. You're working on toms, for example, and you just want to loop those toms um, at a specific section of a song. Uh, what you need to do is very simple. Select the, uh, the section you want to loop, okay, by uh, working with the uh, range selection tool, okay? And then the only thing you need to do is to click on Alt and P as in Peter, and there you go. It's gonna start looping. Super fast and easy. Because basically when you use your range selection tool anywhere in the project, whether it's on an event itself or in an empty space, and you click on P, that will set up the left and right locators um, automatically. And then the only thing you need to do if you wanna loop it, you just need to make sure that the loop option is active on the top, and then you're gonna start playing. But the fastest way is to select your range, click on Alt and P. That will set up the left and right locators, and at the same time, it's going to start playing in a loop. Okay, that range is going to start looping. So very fast to loop a specific section of a song. Let's jump on the next one. How to create your own VST instrument list. All right, so let's go on top in studio and then look for VST plugin manager. And I actually talked about that before, but for plugins, okay? And it's the same principle if you want to do the same with virtual instrument. You can create your own list or collection as they call it. So you select your VST instrument tab and then on the right side, you will have uh, the default selection, uh, which this is what it looks like. 
when you install all of your VST instrument. Cubase will set up and create specific folders for uh, specific types of VST instruments, but you can actually custom that to your own taste if you want to and create your own collection. So uh, you do the same as we do for plugins. We click right here at the uh, down arrow icon and uh, click on new collection. And then let me bring that to the right. And then you click on empty and let's name this one uh, Collection Chris. Click on OK. And I can simply drag and drop the instruments that I want to have in this collection. But I can also create a new folder by clicking on the folder icon. And uh, let's call this one drum. So if I just want to use, uh, I have a folder for all the drums of VST instruments that I usually work with. I can just do it this way and select uh, battery, which I work with a lot, uh, backbone, there you go, uh, both groove agents. And uh, let's uh, okay, go with loop match also, drag and drop them in the folder. And there you go. Uh, let's do the same with uh, other synths, okay? so. And uh, let's go and select the ones that I work with the most. Um, so uh, Retrolog, where is it? There you go. Uh, also Serum, Tal, I have Contact, Easy Keys. All right, so let's go with these. I have those two folders with a bunch of VST instruments. And I can also just drag and drop any instrument into the list. And that's it. Now, the next time I'm going to open myself a new virtual instrument, I'm just going to have to go under Media on the right side of my, the right zone of the project window, click on VST Instruments, and there you go. Now, I just, make, I just need to make sure that Collection Crist or the one that you created is the one selected and you will, you will have your folders and your virtual instruments right here. So this is how you can create yourself your own personal custom VST instrument list. Okay, now tip number six, how to change the maximum level of a channel fader. Okay, I had a question not too long ago, and if I remember correctly, the person was asking um, if there was a way to uh, to have the same channel fader level that he has in Nuendo. Um, he was saying that in Nuendo, you can go up to 12, plus 12 dB in, uh, in volume on the fader. So let's check this out in Cubase. By default, what we have on any channel, we have a plus six range on, uh, on, the, on our fader. So if we set that up to Unity Point, Point, which is zero, we can bring the fader up uh, six dBs, you know, by default. But you can change that to plus 12 dBs if you want to by going under, uh, under project and down to project uh, setup. And then you will see the volume max that is set up by default at plus 6 dB. Just click, select a plus 12, click on OK. And now, as you can see, um, I have 12 extra, I have 6 extra dBs on this channel. So it goes up to 12 dBs. Okay, so this is how you can do it. Okay, now let's jump on the next question. How to micro move a channel fader? So let's go back and look at a very cool trick that you can do to uh, to make your moves on a fader. So if I move a fader, it will go pretty you know pretty fast. But if you need to just uh, do some very tiny moves, okay, and let's say your uh, your fader level is at the bottom of your channel where you have way less resolution, and you want to automate or just tweaking by a few dBs the level of this uh, channel, what you can do is instead of um, trying to do some very gentle and tiny moves with your mouse, you can still move your mouse, but by keeping your finger on the shift, you will be able to slow down the move of the fader and just work on tiny micro moves for, you know, sweet touch-ups, you know, which can be very useful near the end of a mix or when working on automation. So this is how you can do so. So look at the difference. So if I move the fader without keeping my finger on a shift, it's going to move at its regular speed. But when I'm going to click on shift, now it moves in a very slower way. So very useful if you want to, to make some tiny micro moves on a channel. Okay, now let's talk about the next Cubase tip. Okay, change the channel color from the track list. This is a very useful tip that a lot of people don't know about. Okay, so um, if we click on a channel, you want to select, you know, a couple of channels or just one channel, uh, you want to change the color of, of that channel, uh, you select it, 
You click on top and you select the color that you want. But you can also, by keeping your finger again on shift, you can just click at the right side of the channel straight from the track list and that will open your color palette. Okay, very cool. And then you can select the color that you want in a very, very fast way. Very useful if you want to change the color of only one channel at a time, just select this one. And we can also do the same in the uh, straight from the mix console. So it's the same principle, but from the project window. So a lot of people don't know about that one, uh, but it is very useful. Now for the last Cubase tip, and this one is from the mix console. Open the EQ section with one single click. Uh, so for this, I need to make sure that my uh, my EQ tab is open. And if you work with the EQ out of the channel strip when you mix, you are going to find this one very useful. By having the EQ tab visible, um, look at look on top of the EQ. We have a graphic visuals of our EQ curves. The only thing that you need to do to access this, you know, if you want to make a few changes, instead of you know doing it, uh, doing everything from those parameters off the uh, under the EQ tab, you just need to click on the EQ graphic, and there you go. You can make changes right off the bat in a very simple and fast way without leaving the mix console. Super useful, super fast, and very efficient. So there you go, my friends. This is going to be it for today's video. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, share and like. Leave your comments and questions down below. And if you're new here on the channel, or if you've been watching this channel for quite a while, but you're still not subscribed, click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Until next time, take care and see you.